Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Halibari 1 brought to you by Halibari Bhaluka, Bangladesh's leading international school. Today we have the privilege of once again hosting two outstanding leaders. First up, Bangladesh's leading education thought leaders and alumni of London School of Economics, Mr. Simon O'Grady, founding headmaster of Halibari Bhaluka. Welcome Simon. Thank you. Thank you. And our second guest today is the very youthful Mr. Yuzi Ando, country representative of JETRO, Japan External Trade Organization. Mr. Ando has been at the forefront of diving positive change in the Bangladesh business space to support both Japanese and Bangladeshi firms. JETRO has signed major agreements with various institutions and also conducts regular research to ensure more Japanese companies are encouraged to come to Bangladesh, thus bringing in more foreign change. Welcome, Yuzi. Thank you very much for having me, especially in the month of Big 3. Thank you very much. Okay, so very nice. Today's show goes into some country management areas which I think you both will enjoy discussing. Your responses will be followed keenly by your 9 million plus subscriber of our social media channel as well as government and industry professionals. And uh, Yuzi, I start with you on this key question. Uh, first, uh, some data. The population of Japan is about 130 million while Bangladesh is about 170 million. At the same time, the GDP of Japan is about 5 trillion dollars while that Bangladesh is about 1 by 10th of that. Can you please give perhaps the top two reasons how Japan is this level? Thank you very much for very good question. Uh, I think uh, we can uh, say two things. The first thing is, you know, manufacturing sectors in Japan. You know, the, we have uh, uh, around 4.2 million companies in Japan. And uh, in terms of number of the companies, 99.7% uh, are SMEs. So we can say that SMEs are contributing to, uh, you know, the manufacturing sectors in Japan. So we have a, you know, the huge range of the industries in Japan. So I think uh, number one is manufacturing sectors. And uh, number two is, you know, manufacturing sectors is contributing to expanding the exporting uh, to overseas. So, you know, as Bangladesh is doing, you know, the, our export volume is huge. So we can say that. Uh, exporting is contributing to the growth of GDP in Japan uh, in a very, very great manner. So I think uh, these two factors are very important. Okay, Yuzi, thank you. And uh, Simon, uh, some data for your uh, analysis. Uh, the GDP growth rate of Japan is around 2 percent, while that of Bangladesh is around 7 percent. What uh, demographic factor as per you is pushing Bangladesh's growth rate so fast? Great question. Um, I think to give some context. Um, Real growth enables real gains, and these have happened. So Bangladesh has made significant progress in driving down poverty and improving well-being, in reducing infant mortality and improving access to energy and education, and particularly in rural areas. So economic growth should be seen as the engine for further improvement. Um, and the supply side is what frames the long-term growth of the economy. Inward investment, labour supply, labour productivity and tech advances. These are the key factors. We need to make sure that growth is creating jobs that lead to competitive business environment. We need to ensure that uh, we're building an efficient infrastructure countrywide. And thirdly, we need to make sure that uh, there's an improvement in human capital. Um, human capital that's building a skilled labor force. So let's summarize this. Whilst we need demand management policy to control inflation, we need supply side incentives to attract investment. Education is key to transforming our economy and indeed for changing the lives of young people in this country. So the demographic asset that the country has needs to be nurtured so that we're in a stronger position. Simon, uh, this is something I know you believe uh, you're completely in. You yourself are trained by Harvard. Uh, not only this, Heliveri Bhaluka is the only school in the country, if not Asia, where all teachers and I mean all are certified by Harvard. 
Looking at this in the context of Bangladesh, United Nations has clearly said that skill development is an extremely key issue uh, for, uh, for Bangladesh right now. Uh, if, you, uh, if you were in charge of training Bangladesh's youth, what would be the top two strategies or focus areas you would suggest to ensure Bangladesh's high growth rate continues? Well, the first thing I would say is that Heli Bribaluka is very keen to exert its influence both as an institution and as an influencer. Halibri, we seek to get and keep great people. And we do that in a sort of micro context in three ways. First of all, we look for people who can think. Secondly, we are seeking people who care. And thirdly, we're looking for people who persist. And indeed, you know, how relentless in the pursuit of the mission of the school and indeed the delivery of our objectives and goals. So training in future skills, really to address your question directly, has similar themes. Um, being, building skills, building critical thinking and critical skills more widely, engendering that culture of service and service standards and indeed encouraging people by rewarding their persistence. So in, in summary, I would say that training in future skills means meeting the needs of the nation by building infrastructure, improving energy supply, and focusing on the sector support that it needs, particularly in construction, in RMG, and in the tourism. And again, education is key to making sure that this happens successfully long term. Okay. Simon, and uh, you say, uh, Jetro and you personally have significantly backed research and training projects in Bangladesh. And you have extended this training to the government also. How does this advantage Japanese investment into the country? And uh, in other words, how does training Bangladeshi people give advantage of Japanese companies? Thank you very much for your good, good question. You know, the you know, direct answer is, you know, the uh, Bangladesh people are really, really hardworking. And uh, through our, you know, trainings, uh, you know, Bangladesh people can get, uh, you know, the business manners and trust building, uh, you know, with Japanese companies and others. And as Bangladesh people are doing, uh, we are also put importance on the trust building with others, also in, uh, you know, uh, business development. So uh, through the trainings, I think, uh, you know, uh, business manners, trust building uh, can be, you know, that can be possible. And uh, another thing is that, you know, technical transfer uh, can be done uh, from Japanese company to Bangladesh companies. So with this, uh, you know, uh, these technical transfers, uh, Bangladesh can, you know, the develop the, uh, their own industries uh, by getting a, a technical transfer from Japanese companies. And uh, as you may know, Jap Japan is facing the aging society uh, uh, in our country, and uh, uh, our population is decreasing. So, uh, you know, we are, you know, trying to uh, get the, you know, energy and uh, uh, human resource from Bangladesh to Japan. So, at the end of the day, uh, the trained uh, Bangladesh people, you know, can go to Japan uh, as, a, you know, the highly professional, uh, you know, like uh, IT engineers and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, professionals. So we believe that the Japanese companies can uh, get the, uh, you know, the uh, contribution or uh, support from, uh, you know, the Bangladesh people at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, you see, Simon, one common thread between uh, both of you, uh, or rather between both of your organizations, has been your focus on developing non-urban areas. I know that Jetro is deeply involved uh, with the development of almost 1,000 acres of the Japanese economic zone which is expected to get almost 20 billion dollars into the country. And uh, Simon, Halibiri Bhaluka is in Maimon Shing. Uh, at the same time, your group has almost finished construction of the first five-star Marriott International Hotel in uh, Mauna, apart from developing the 850-acre uh, Dharmashur economic zone. Does this non-urban focus really help? And uh, should we not focus instead on making our urban cities more up to world standards, both of you? So in our case, in Maimon Singh, we know that um, you know, by investing in Maimon Singh and building an, an outstanding school, 
we are helping to, you know, connect people to better housing. We are helping to enable better transportation systems. We are encouraging, you know, people to locate there for an outstanding education. And indeed, we are giving jobs and ultimately we are raising living standards. So, taken together, it is a real golden egg that we are seeing in, in this sort of regional policy. Yeah, and what about using? I thank you very much. What about yeah, actually, you know, uh, I, I believe that, you know, real face of Bangladesh is rural area, non-urban area. Uh, we, you know, the, I, lo I love, you know, the staying at the rural area and the villages, the, 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 you know, the real face of Bangladesh. So without seeing the, the rural area, we can't say anything about Bangladesh. But on the other hand, we need employment you know, to make uh, more development in Bangladesh. So in that sense, uh, I think uh, IT sectors and startup sectors are, you know, really, really key uh, in rural area. Uh, you know, uh, if we uh, try to develop the uh, industry uh, outside of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the city, you know, we need a lot of infrastructures and uh, electricity utilities, but it takes time for us to prepare the, all the uh, hard infrastructures. But on the other hand, uh, now government is trying to de develop the uh, IT uh, software park outside of Dhaka. I think this is one of the uh, good solutions. Uh, with uh, you know, uh, internet and uh, uh, highly professional, we can uh, develop the businesses uh, in IT sectors or startup companies uh, can approach to the social challenges uh, in rural area. So I think uh, IT uh, software and startups are the, uh, are the two uh, factors uh, in rural area. Thank you, Yuzi, and thank you, Simon. This it was very insightful, actually. And uh, now it's break time, and we'll uh, take a short break. Uh, after the break, our discussion will go on. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome again and our respected guest Yuzi and Simon are with us and our discussion will, uh, we, we are going to continue. Okay, Yuzi, some of your thoughts have uh, gained a significant discussion in various circles. Uh, you have uh, pushed Bangladesh Bank to give working capital support to Japanese and other foreign institutions. You have also pushed for a better business environment including higher uh, TT transfers and faster customs clearance. But in education, uh, despite offering government scholarships, Japan is still not among us the top three, uh, top three destinations of Bangladeshi students. Why is this and what can change this? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, Japan is welcoming uh, Bangladeshi students in Japan. But on the other hand, we, ha we still have uh, language barriers uh, between two countries. Uh, actually, the, in uh, many of the Japanese universities, uh, the classes are only given in Japanese languages. So uh, we are needing the mindset uh, of the uh, universities in Japan. So this is number one. And number two is uh, also, uh, you know, we are trying to uh, be internationalized more. Uh, you know, but we have uh, still uh, uh, more spaces, uh, you know, uh, to promote ourselves or to promote the international students from uh, other countries to Japan. So uh, we need to promote uh, more actively. Uh, in this point, uh, we have uh, uh, the offices of University of Tokyo in Dhaka, and uh, they have a role uh, in promoting uh, Bangladesh students uh, to, to Japan. So uh, we can uh, uh, more, uh, more collaborate with the University of Tokyo uh, Dhaka office uh, to promote more uh, uh, Bangladesh students uh, from here to Japan. So uh, these are the what we are uh, uh, we are needed to, to to promote more. Yeah, Yuji and uh, Simon, uh, throwing this question uh, at you in another perspective, uh, I have shared in one of the earlier episodes that almost fifty thousand students go abroad every year from Bangladesh to join foreign uh, courses in some of the world's leading educational institutions. What would you suggest should be the strategies to grow this number? Well, allow me to suggest strategies that do the opposite. Yeah. Um, we are leading the way in seeking to ensure that Bangladesh has a world-class education system, world-class schools, world-class universities. 
And outstanding schools like Haleybury um, are very much like high-performing education systems. The characteristics are the same. So we focus on the future, not the past. We focus on skills, skills such as critical thinking, creativity, collaboration. And indeed, we get and keep great teachers. And that is the you know, proven recipe across the world to have great schools as part of world-class systems. So we need to give the students of Bangladesh both options and choices. And indeed, that's what we're about. Um, we need to have a vision and indeed a strategy that embraces all young people and builds a system that's future-focused, progressive and inclusive. So we need to make sure that great education is made in Bangladesh. So that means that we need to have a school context where children want to go to school and indeed they enjoy the learning experience of doing so, particularly girls. We need to make sure that we have an education strategy that gives that parity of steam, esteem to both academic education and indeed vocational education. We need to make sure that we're stopping the brain drain and the outflow of talent and the capital outflows that go with that. Not by punitive penalties, but through positive incentives. So long term, the schools and universities of Bangladesh need to have that incentive to persuade students to stay. I'm very pleased to be able to uh, sincerely say that Heli Helibri Baluka changes the game. And it changes the game by setting standards that are higher than its regional competition and indeed by attracting the brightest students in Bangladesh and achieving stellar outcomes for them. So in conclusion, the answer to your question is not to encourage a further exodus of students. The response is to keep them here. Yeah. And uh, Simon and EJ, uh, we have uh, reached the end of the uh, episode, but I'm not going to leave you both without a surprise question. And you see, uh, rumors have it that you can speak Bengali very well. And uh, may I have just one line in Bengali from you that the Bangladesh youth can take back as a key learning from today. <laughs> Uh, you know, the hard working uh, promises success. So, with this note, uh, we always try to make efforts uh, for future success. So, uh, we always try to make efforts for future success. So, we always try to make efforts for future success. So, we always try to So, much. And Simon, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to speak in Bengali. <laughs> I know you. And, but if there were any single set of lines from your favorite writer or author would like to quote to Bangladesh youth, what would they be? You know, every day um, I meet young people and I'm inspired by them. Um, I believe in the future of this country because I have faith in its young people. And however, they have a duty to know its history and indeed to know its heritage, most notably in its literature. So, um, Gitanjali is the most famous poem by Robin Ardrath Tucker, published over a hundred years ago, in 1910. Uh, in Bengali, it led to the Nobel Prize, making him the first non-European to achieve such global standing. So years ahead of his time, Tucker saw education as cultivating the power of ideas through independent effort, through curiosity and alertness to, of mind, those very things that we cherish today, and certainly at Hele Ribaluka. So, Kitanjali gives us harmony and beauty and service to humanity. And it's in, within that special poem 
that the mind is without fear. And where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my Father, let my country awake. That's beauty itself. Excellent, Simon, excellent. And, and Simon, you see, it has been an absolute pleasure learning so much from both of you. And thank you for giving such deep knowledge, uh, not just to me, but to the million of viewers and followers of our channel. And uh, to our viewers, I would remind them that this absolutely exciting episodes of Haley Very One are brought to you by Bangladesh's leading international school, Haley Very Bhaluka. And we are bringing many more such episodes in the upcoming weeks. We have the country head of the Oracle as well as the BIDA chairman sharing very interesting insights with our very own Simon O'Grady, founding headmaster of Haleyberry Bhaluka. So, do not miss tuning in next week, same time. This is your very own Shuchana saying goodbye. Till then, have a great weekend.